Okay, if you just saw our previous video here that we did about what, what we now believe this body is you know, capable of fitting on, I thought it was about time we, we showed how this body was made and why it was such a, a difficult body to make compared to our other stuff. First of all, this body um, had a lot of stuff that we needed to fix in it to get it looking a little bit better. If you come down over here, you can see this. This has actually been filled in with material to fill in the cut line. So this body will work with a few more things. Um, we haven't got them all filled in, but we filled in a lot of them. Uh, little pit holes from air bubbles in the casting. Uh, let's see if I can show it back here. Anything back here that's obvious. Uh, da, da, da. I know we got some here. Oh. There's a little dark spot there. That's filler in it. That was a big bubble in the rear bumper. This this mold was in not so good shape. Uh, as you can see here, here's kind of an error in the original casting. We, of course, that really needs that material removed, but I'm not going to mess with it. These uh, rear tail lights actually caused quite a bit of difficulty in the removal of the body because there is such an uh, overhang on that. It makes the body more difficult to remove. Coming around here, uh, it's, you can see we did some fill in certain spots. Um, I think, yeah, there's some big fill in here. There was some dents and stuff in there. Um, some fill. It looks like they're still, no, those are filled in. Most of these look like they're filled in, but lots of little, little air bubbles in the original casting. Uh, but what you, you really want to know is how do you get that undercut in the front bumper here? Okay, so I'm getting that undercut because this is a two-part mold. Whoa! Look at that. That's how you get that and able to get the body off the mold. Two parts. Now, I don't know if this was originally this loose of a fit and it's just over time and use that it's this way, but it is a little, kind of loose now. And at some point, this part up here was broken and it's been kind of, I think, JV weld back together again. Uh, and it, it was never mounted to anything, which I think if we ever run it again, and that's a big question mark, we will figure out a way to get it mounted to something to make it easier to get the uh, body off the mold. So what has to be done is, we were taking it off the machine, setting the body over like on this table and put pulling off the, trying to pull off the body like this off the mold, which is still very difficult because of course the mold wants to lift up with you. So that's why you see hand prints in some of the bodies. This one's got paper towel, because I tried to use a paper towel to keep my glove from sticking to it, but you know, it's too stupid to realize that, you know, the paper's gonna stick to it just as much as my glove is. <laughs> you know, you're just trying to think of something to prevent your glove mark in it, and you don't quite think of what you're doing. But yeah, I had to put a hand down here while lifting, and that worked, and then we were, uh, what do we do? We greased up this area in here to try and get these two parts to kind of slide, have less friction. I think some in here too we did. Probably need to, this time if we do it again, we'll, we'll grease it up even more with something a little thicker almost in there. And uh, yeah, so you're just prying from the front to try and get it off. You can't have the machine lift up straight up because that'll never work. It just is impossible. It'll just turn the body inside out. So, and then you have the undercut over here as we were showing before. So yeah, that's, that's why this is such a pain to make. And here's how you get that those two undercuts is two part. Now, there are out in the industry much more modern, more complex multi-part molds than this. This is a very early way of form of doing it. Um, and I'm not just talking RC, I'm talking all sorts of stuff out in the industry for vacuum forming. Now you know, for those who were wondering how we how we did that body and how that was made, now you have your answer. Now maybe if you, you get inspiration on how you could do one of your own. But uh, design, design, design is going to be key on that. Uh, getting your body lines, your parting spots for the mold. And if, remember, this was cast. This is all cast. It's not machined like you can do with modern CNC machines. This was cast to get this. So this is actually a pretty impressive feat that they could do this the way they did it. 
Um, I'm not sure if Rick Jordan was responsible for this mold or not when he was at Boeing, but um, uh, there, he could have been, or it could have been somebody else. This is a er, fairly early mold by the looks of it. So it may have been before he worked there. I don't know, uh, don't know that for sure. Rick, if you're watching, I know you occasionally see these. Chime in, let us know. Have a good day. Bye-bye.